Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is our fourth class, I believe. And the last class we had, the last um, session we had, it was very interesting. So this session, I want to go over a little bit of what we had last session, <clears throat> just to recap what we were doing. And again, we went over the introductions for our beginner Dakota language cyber group. Again, I want to appreciate the interest for the language, and I want to thank you all who are participating and help to keep the language alive. I'm grateful for this class to be allowed over Zoom to share with anyone. And I will share what I can in the 10 classes we're privileged with. Okay. And again, put yourself on mute until you have a response. Raise your hand if you have a question. There's a little comment in the bottom of the screen where you can raise your hand and we'll try to get back to you okay so we're all learners let's have fun while we learn uh saying the words some of the dakota words um you have to use a lot of expression in your in your voice i always talk about your esophagus your nasal uh your guttural sounds in any language there's um ways to identify different ways that they speak, the phonology and the morphology of the language. So again, we have our consonants for our letters. We have vowels, we have nasal vowels, and we have consonants. Okay, the five vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. The three nasal vowels are an, in, un, Again, the nasal is from your nose inside. It's almost like it's blocked. An, in, un. So once again, when you recognize the nasal vowel, the N will have a little tail on it when you write it. Okay. So I did mention before about writing the words, how you would understand it, how, would, how you would read it. Okay, so some people <clears throat> understand the English language, or they write it more than others. They know the long E, the long I, the short A, the short E. So you can write that the way you hear, the way it sounds, okay? There's 26 consonants, B, C, Ch, and the C with the asterisk, it's a k sound, okay? Then again, there's D, G, and the G with the asterisk is k sound. Okay, so remember, you have to have a guttural sound, which comes from your throat. And when you do aspirated sounds, again, that's, um, or explode, explosive sounds too, okay? The H is ha and so there's again there's a guttural sound. The K and the KH is an aspirated sound. And again the K with the asterisk above it, it can be it can be explosive. Okay. The M, N, P, the PH is p and the P with the asterisk. Again, that can be guttural. It sounds like a duck noise. The S, and again, the S with the asterisk on above it, it's sh. Okay. T and TH is t. Okay. T, the other T with the asterisk again. It can be guttural or explosive. T. And W, Y, Z, and Z. Again, when you say explosive, it comes through your teeth when you talk. Z. Okay, so be mindful of how you say them. And when I go through them with you, I'll always use the, the right wording for it. Again, I, I mentioned their synonyms, the way some words are written and the way they sound. I always use the word uh, wachi and wachi. 
Again, it's how you express it in your in your voice. Wachi is dance. Wachi is dance. Wachi, wachi, waji. So there's the always the number one, waji, and wachi. So again, the men and women have different endings. Our language is, um, that's a difference between the way the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota speak. The men have their own endings. The women have their own endings too when they speak in their statements. The men, their endings end with do. The women are ye. Okay, so when you listen to the very fluent speakers, the men speak with the do sound at the end of their statements, the women with yay. So now when you listen to people in our culture, the grandparents usually teach the grandchildren. So if a grandfather is teaching a granddaughter how to speak in a Dakota, Lakota, Nakota language, the granddaughter will end up speaking with the man with the endings do, okay? Unless they're 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 told, okay? So that's something to pay attention to. A lot of people talked about Dances with Wolves, that movie. Everybody's speaking like a woman in all of that. So if you watch Dances with Wolves, pay attention to that. You'll listen. Okay. We went through the kinship, the Tiwahe, Mitakuye, immediate family. We went through that. We went through our counting, Woyawa, one to 10, we counted. So again, we said number one is Wancha or Waji. Okay. Then we, we talked about um, how we use them in sentences. We made little sentences last time, the last two classes. We made sentences, just um, statements. We made using the colors, the numbers, and the animal and the family. And the colors, sometimes they say owa, and then we say owapi. Again, language is territorial. I always talk about how we have different Dakota reserves, different Dakota communities. We have, um, for us, standing buffalo. Again, we have white cap, Wapaten. We have those outside of Saskatoon. And we have our Nakota reserves too. And they're, they're territorial, carry the kettle, some in Alberta. Again, our Dakota reserves, some are in Sioux Valley. Um, Burtail, Dakota TP out in Manitoba. So if you listen to the language, how it's spoken in that territory in Manitoba, to here, to the Southern Reserves, Dakota Reserves, you'll hear the different dialects. The dialects are slightly different. And we have one Lakota Reserve, and that's Wood Mountain. The dialects spoken are with the D for the Dakota, the N for Nakota, and the D for us, and L for Lakota. Okay, so those are different dialects that we have. So we had our elder Harold Blacksmith praying for us when we first started our class. And he, um, he recognized that some of the words were different that we say here on Standing Buffalo compared to Sioux Valley. So I, I, I included that, and that was a strong point that he made because, yes, there is different dialects, and as Dakota people, we respect other, other languages, other people. And so I added it in here, what he had mentioned, right? I feel that it was very important to do that, to understand that the, their dialect it exists, we exist, right? And to share our language and to understand. So I added that in here too. We went over that. Again, we went over the seven days. Mpetu Shakawi. Mpetu is day. Shakawi is seven. 
So it's seven days. We done the Dakota way, the literal translation of what it means in Dakota and English. Okay. So it's recognized in the English way as a calendar. And I explained before that we did not have, um, I always talk about um, the TP days. Okay. The TP days. We never had a calendar. We never had seven days. Right. So this was, this is modernized to, um, to accommodate the, the Western society. Right. Because our Saturday is in Petu Owanka Yujajapi. So literally it's day floors wash. And that's, that means Saturday. So that's recognized in residential schools that that's when they washed floors was on Saturday, right? So we talk about the reconciliation, right? And I always make mention of that, <clears throat> that we did not have uh, a Western calendar like we do have today. So our days are made according to what was done in um, in residential school, right? So Mpetu Waka is day holy literally and english it's sunday that means it's holy day waka is holy right it's holy then again we went on with our day first is monday impetu waji impetu inupa is day two impetu iamani impetu itopa impetu izapta right so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and literally day comes before <clears throat> what the day is, okay? So I wanted to explain a little bit about that because I was asked about it. And so I, that's where we recognize it from because we never did have days of the week. What we went by was a calendar uh, on um, a buffalo hide by the winters. We counted the winters, right? And that's what was our our calendar. So again, we went over some animals. We went over the basic animals. Um, I wanted to add snake in here, but that, that's a long, long word. So I just used the basic ones. We went over Tatanka is buffalo. Shunka is dog. Shunka Waka is horse. Tachcha is deer. Hitunkana is mouse. Mastincha is rabbit. Mato is bear. Wambadi is eagle. Hoha is fish. There's that, that guttural G ho ha. So we talked about making them plural. To pluralize an animal, we don't add an S. We don't add an ES. We add a number. Okay. And then again, we have um, some more words that we can use to make them more. For this one, we use ho ha zapta. Hoha zapta is five fish, right? Then again, we use the colors. Um, mastincha ghi. Ghi is brown. Mastincha is rabbit. Wambadi numpa, two eagles. Tachcha numpa ghi. So that's two brown deer, right? Mastincha uh, skawaji. Hia, no, 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 no. Hia means no. So hia, mastincha ri waji. One brown rabbit. Because it's not ska, ska is white, right? So again, I talked about having the blended language. We talked about the blended language, knowing that when you speak one, one language with English, um, 
a lot of people are learning that way and that's okay that's good it's in every language they use a uh, language plus english to to talk that's a blended language i know of some younger people they use they speak blended language with cree and dakota and i find that really really different and that's learning three different languages they're speaking english dakota and cree i found that really different and i like that you know but to speak a blended language to make a sentence and that that that's a way of learning too and i appreciate that too we went over i just made this up last last time because um we were wanting to learn statements um i don't say sentences i say statements because a lot of the dakota language it's uh, some of it are commands right commands in in dakota language is easier to hear than what is said in english i feel that it's it's easier to um understand or accept and it doesn't sound like a discipline right so what i what i came up with was just these words so that way it could be made into simple statements <clears throat> with the words that we already know so i put i want wachi and i made a word hot dog wachi i want a hot dog so that's a blended language saying hot dog wachi right So now when we speak the Dakota language we put the subject first the subject first of what are we going to talk about and like in the other one i had put that tatanka we're going to talk about that tatanka so we're going to say tatanka riwaji so that's buffalo brown one right the subject is the buffalo okay so what is it it's brown how much is there there's one okay another word we learned was maku maku and that means give me so maku is give me mini maku mini is water so that's part of our drink that we practiced to last session mini maku give me water the subject is water right then again i had eja eja that means him or her too or someone also okay eja so now we have mija me too mija so our response to that would say um uh mija somebody asks a question or something mija me too right and then again nija you too nija you too ia ia him or her or somebody not something but somebody ia then again we have mia mia that's me nia is you nia and tawa is his or hers or someone's tawa me tawa is mine me tawa ni tawa is yours ni tawa there is a pattern here and <clears throat> for the for myself for the person that's speaking it would be the m i me so me me is um the m i right there and it's in right here too so that's the pattern when you're explaining something about yourself right about myself i would use that and for you it would be ni 
right? And I think there, it, this, this statement is in other languages to how you say me and me, me and me, right? Me is you, okay? So you pay attention to that in other languages to that that's it's kind of different when you start noticing things like that, right? So when you start noticing things like that in other language, you're finding a connection with language. And that's good. There's always something, um, a way to learn it. A lot of people have that fear that, no, I'm saying it wrong. No, it's not wrong. You can keep on practicing and practicing. We're so fortunate to have a lot of websites online to learn languages any language right so that's what we done last time mm, we practice food woyute 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 a lot of well somebody had mentioned that they didn't have pudding a long time ago but again we're we're focusing on the western the Western foods. So to us, wojapi, when we say wojapi, that's made of a blend of berries, uh, a blend of um, different kind of foods, and it's made into kind of like a pudding. So that's what we used. We used pudding that was suited close enough to wojapi. Wojapi. Wojapi maku. Right. Wojapi maku. Again, there's our words. I want. Wojapi maku. Wojapi awachi. Wojapi wachi. Our meat was tado. Tado. Tatanka toro. Tatanka tado. Tahja taro, deer meat. Mastincha uh, taro, rabbit meat. Potato equals bado. So that's something that you could remember is taro and bado. It kind of rhymes, so it's easy to remember, right? And wahampi is soup. Okay. Wahampi taro bado wachi. So meat and potato soup I want, right? Then we have bread, aguyapi. See, back in the TP days too, we never had bread, right? We never had a uh, bannock. So this word was made up to accommodate what the Western language. Ahuyapi, ahuyapi. Again, there's that guttural sound from your esophagus, right? Ahuyapi. And cake is ahuyapi squiena. Ahuyapi squiena. Squiena means something sweet, right? And sugar is chahampi. Chahampi. Sugar. Again, back in the teepee days, we never had sugar, right? When you look at words, when it has cha in front of it, C-A-N, cha, that means, you know, that it came from something that came from the ground like a tree, right? When you talk about um, choke cherries, chahampi, um, corn is wamna heza, wamna heza, wamna heza. Again, we had our vegetables, right? Takushnishni, takushnishni. Our pumpkin, wamnu, wamnu. Our onions are pshi. She, there's that sh, right? It comes from your, your, your front teeth. She. 
So when you start noticing that your mouth can, and your throat and your nose can produce different sounds and then you start practicing, right? So you feel comfortable with it. Once you start feeling comfortable with the words, how they come out, you're going to have fun with it, right? Don't be ashamed. Don't be getting, you know, upset because you don't know how to say it. Keep practicing because if you're learning a new language, your mouth, your throat, your nasal, your, your esophagus, it has to get used to of saying different different um, letters, right? So when you start doing that, you feel more comfortable with it, okay? So keep practicing and allow your voice, allow your nose, your throat to make those sounds, okay? Because once you start learning that, you're going to want to learn other languages too, right? You'll feel comfortable. Okay, waskuyacha. Waskuyacha. That means fruits of all kinds. When we talk about fruits of all kinds, I had said in the past that it means that it's um, a lot of different strawberries, berries, all mixed in one. Okay, like a fruit salad almost, but it's not. It's kind of like full of juice. Choke cherries, champa, champa. There's that C-A-N, cha, cha, champa, right? Oranges. Tashpa zizi, tashpa zizi. Again, there's that that N that has that tail, that nasalized N, tashpa. Again, you hear it from your nasal, tashpa zizi, right? Apples, tashpa, tashpa. And I shouldn't be putting an S behind apples or oranges or choke cherries or onions. Because that means I'm trying to pluralize it, right? Candy, Chahampi Shashana. Chahampi Shashana. Okay. So back in the day, Shashana, remember our colors. Our colors are purple and pink. That's almost similar to Shashana. So Shashana is almost like a different color again. So when we say different different words, kind of connect them, right? We practiced our drink, yatka, yatka, yatka. Again, that comes from your throat inside here, your esophagus. You can hear the K in there, yatka, yatka. Even when you hold your hand on your throat, your esophagus, when you say it, you can feel the vibration in there on your K on your esophagus, yatka, okay? Kind of a guttural, a guttural K. When I say guttural, it's almost like you have to have a mouth full of saliva, right? Yatka, okay? So our T is wachbe, wachbe. Again, our H is kind of like in our nasal, but still in our throat, wachbe, wachbe. Our juice is khampi, khampi. Water is mini, mini. Mini wachi, remember? Milk is asampi, asampi. The end is nasalized, asampi, asampi. Coffee is pejuta sapa. Remember, sapa is a color, right? Pejuta means medicine. Pejuta sapa. Again, we did not have coffee back in our TP days, but we westernized it and called it pejuta sapa because pejuta is medicine. And when they drank the coffee, it made them think it was a medicine because it made them feel different, right? It made them feel more alert, probably, right? And it was black, so they called it sapa. Pejuta Sapa, right? So if you compare coffee or any kind of different um, food or drink that was um, was not back in like the TP days, I always say, compared to the Western way that we have now, you'll be amazed at what the words 
come out as, right? We have connecting words. One of the connecting words we have is the, right? So a lot of people always say, you know, it has to be, it has to be coming, it has to be at the first, the beginning of the statement. Remember in Dakota language, I always say the subject comes first, right? So probably in two more sessions, I'll show you how to use the connecting words. But I wanted you to learn them to keep a mental note about them, about where they can be. Some of the words are, um, are added on to the verbs, okay? So the is key. The N is nasalized, ki, and is ka, ka, ka. And we always hear our Western language again, well, and we say ito, ito, ito. It's a long I, okay? Ito, and there's but, tka, tka. It's kind of like the T and the K are together. In a fast, you say it real fast. You can't even, you don't have time to say the T, the T, K, T, K, T, K. It's kind of like a, a guttural, a guttural K, but the T has to be in there. T, K. Okay. So I'll show you how to do those. For now, we have some of our body parts, right? So we have our, our head, which we call as our pa. Our whole head is our, our pa, right? Pa. The whole head is pa, okay? So our hair is pahi, pahi. Just the hair is pahi, right? When we say porcupine, it's pahi. It's 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 said in a in a stronger version, pahi. But our hair here is pahi. Our eye is ishta, right? Ishtahi, right? Brown eye, ishtahi, or blue eye, ishtapo, ishtato, right? So you can add color to your your head parts. Your noche is your ear. No re, right? No re. Okay. Some people always want to um they get confused with the with the nose. Po re. Po re. Okay. So no re and po re. No re po re. Do you practice that? The reason why they get confused is because the N begins with um no re. And we think, well. It should be nose, but because it begins with end, but no. And our mouth is ita, ita. It means our just the mouth. It doesn't mean your lips. It means ita, your mouth. Your nose is poche. Your teeth is he, he. The H is um is an aspirated H, he. He and the I is a long E. He, he. The um, it the way you would remember it is high. So again, your mouth is E, E. That that mean that you're like inside your mouth E. So there's two words for mouth E there, the whole part, right? And the other one is E, right? E. Again, your body parts, tacha, tacha. We have our pa, our head, right? I usually had a little man on here, but I don't know what happened to it. It, it pointed to the body parts. We have our nape, our hand, right? Our whole hand is nape, right? The whole hand is nape, okay? Your finger, one finger is napsukaza, napsukaza, okay? Our foot, the whole foot 
is siha, siha, siha. And your stomach, the whole stomach on the outside, you point from the outside of the body, right? The outside of your body, you point to your stomach is your tazi, tazi, tazi. Not what's inside your stomach, but the outer part, the outer part of your body, your stomach. Because inside your body parts, there, there's labeled differently too. There's um, our, um, our stomachs are labeled differently compared to the outside, okay? And your whole arm is your ishto, your whole arm. The whole arm is ishto, okay? Your elbow is ishpa, ishpa, right? Ishpa. Then your ankle is ishkahu, ishkahu. It's just your ankle, okay? Ishkahu. But your whole leg is hu, hu, hu. It's almost like how an owl sounds, who, okay? So your body parts are labeled different compared to what's internal, okay? Because your head, you have your eyes, your nose, all that. It's all labeled differently. Some of the quantity words that we use when we talk about um, naming a whole bunch of things, right? When we're doing the, um, when we're comparing something, we say waji, waji, or tatanka waji, one buffalo, right? We're, we're doing it like that. But when we're talking about something, uh, when we say none, there's none, right? Wazicha, wazicha. That means there's none, nothing. Waziacha. Because waji one, but there's none. Waziacha. Okay. So again, we talk about once. That once is wancha, right? Wancha. We say number one is waji. Waji, right? If you go back to your numbers, it says waji. Then once is wancha. Again, some people, territorial language, they use wancha in as number one, two, okay? So remember, you have to listen to how people are speaking in their territory. And all, the whole of everything, the whole thing is owasan, okay? In our language, we always talk about mitakuye owasan. Mitakuye is all relatives, is relatives, right? We talked about that in our kinship, right? As we said mitakuye, an immediate family. Mitakuye, immediate family, like right now. But then again, we talk about our... Our quantity words. We say mitakuye owasan, all my relations. Mitakuye owasan. Okay, so people always wonder what what that means. Mitakuye is immediate family, but when we say owasan, we say all our relatives. Mitakuye owasan, right? So owasan is um, it can mean um, tatanka owasan, right? All, all buffalo. Okay. <clears throat> so when we say lot, we talk about a whole bunch of things, right? We say lots. There's like 50, 60, right? 100, that's lots. So we ota, we say, it's more like a command kind of word, a command response. And um, how many people are there? And they'll ask, Ota, and they'll say lots, right? And that's just like one, one word. 
uh, our Dakota word can mean like a lot of words, just one word, right? So ota is lots. And when we say more, it's sumpa, sumpa, right? Sumpa. And there's only some, it's onre, onre. Like G is guttural, onre. Again, re. So if you want to practice that, it comes from the top of your palate to the back of your, your throat, onre, right? You can almost feel that vibration in the back, right? People have a hard time with that sometimes, right? Because some people, their tongues, underneath their tongues, their, their tongues are not as long as some people sometimes, so they can't say certain words, but they practice. And the more you practice the consonants, the vowels, it'll come more naturally, right? So, on <clears throat> And moving your mouth more, a lot of people find that um, they get a dry mouth trying to speak the Dakota language or any language, but it takes practice, okay? Again, we had our clothes. So the clothes we talked about, like I mentioned about having then um, we can add the colors and the numbers uh, to pluralize them on them. And we can add the, the kinship, the woman, the man on it. And I was working on that because I wanted to email you. Somebody had asked for some, some things to work on, like some work pages. And I was working on that, but I got busy doing something else. So I will email them to the ones that wanted them emailed, or I'll email them to um, Kristen. I'll email them to her. So if you want them, I'll let her know, or they will let me know, actually. But I'll email it to them to give you, okay? So our dress is hiyak'e, is clothes. I should begin with that, hiyak'e. So dress, again, you could put these into syllables to accommodate yourself to how to, to learn them, right? Because if you do it in syllables and write it the way you will understand it, because sometimes some people say, this is not the right way to write it. And I always respond with, well, write it how you will, will understand it to yourself, to accommodate yourself to learn the language, okay? So dress is sanksan icha. Sanksanicha, Sanksanicha. Skirt is Sanksanicha, Hank and A. That basically means just a half dress. Okay. Sanksanicha, Hank and A. So that means half dress. And pants is Unzeg, Unzegi. Okay. Shirt is we cha umpi, we cha umpi, we cha umpi. If you look back on how to say man in Dakota, it's we cha sha, we cha sha. So a shirt basically belongs to a man, we cha umpi. Right? Because again, back in the TP days, women didn't wear shirts, right? They wore dresses. Shoes is chahampa, chahampa. There is that C A N, cha, right? And then again, there's hampa, hampa, hampa. Gloves is na pink pa yukagana. Na pink pa yukagana. Okay. So if you compare our body language, our fingers, na psukaza is finger. Na psukaza, right? So there's the nap again, N A P, right? 
the pink pie you have and uh, it's gloves so that it goes on the on the fingers okay and our cap is wapaha wapaha and remember what head was head was pa right hair is pahi so wapaha it just goes on top wapaha right it goes on top of our pa and our scarf scarf is tahu ochozie tahu ochozie okay so our our neck is tahu tahu is our neck okay so it's just something that wraps around our neck tahu ochozie okay so a lot of the Dakota words, it makes a connection to a body part of where it's supposed to go, okay? Because pants is oze. Oze is, is your butt, right? So a pants, it comes over your butt. Ozohie. 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 Again, the G is a guttural, kind of nasalized sound, okay? So when you put put the words into syllables, it's easier for you to say. And write it the way you feel comfortable, that you will understand it, that you will remember it. Okay? So again, I want to <clears throat> go over these because you can make them into little statements. Okay? Use the, the subject first and <clears throat> create statements. And I'm going to email again, like I said, to Kristen or the public library to see if they can get them to use whoever wants to learn them. Mm. This one for the next session, I want to learn more of these with you or teach you more because. Um, I want to go into sentences, okay? Because the next class, the next session will be our fifth one. So I want to start doing some sentences, some statements. Not not big, long statements, but just enough for us to use and just to speak a little bit of beginner Dakota language, okay? And I want to be able to hear you guys say the language too with me the next session, okay? So start practicing your guttural sound, your nasal eye sound, and your um, aspirated sounds, okay? So take time for yourself to go over them. And there's a lot of Dakota apps now on the websites you could use and practice too, right? So that's what I wanted to say. So that will be all. Anybody have any questions? You guys are all okay?